to be exonerated and released from their role because the issues of innocence. It's 138 of us. So that indicates that my story is not that all unique. It has been 1,246 people already executed. Many of them in the state of Texas. And only God knows how I many of them did not have the luck that I, the Chewbacca had and I and the rest of the 136. Also, as I tell my story, if you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like laughing, please laugh. I love smiling faces. The only thing I ask as a favor, please don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> it was a beautiful day. I never forgot it. It was on a Monday, May the 2nd, 1984. While my co-workers and I was eating lunch on the apple tree, we hear noise in the orchards that did not belong to the orchards. But six or eight police cars riding the hills. And they stopped in front of us. FBI agents, and they came out of the car with weapons pointing at us. And they told us to hit the ground, and, and we did. Then they called my name, but I was scared to get up because of the weapon that was pointing at me. But I raised my arms. Then they told me to get up and walk toward them, and I did. When I got in front of them, they told me to open my mouth. They want to see if I had a missing tooth. And I showed it to them. The tooth is, is still missing. Then they told me to lift the sleeves of my left arm from my shirt. They want to see a tattoo, and I show it to them. Then they say, yes, you are the man we are looking for. You are wanted for unlawfully fly to avoid prosecution with warrants for your arrest for first degree murder and armed robbery in the state of Florida. So they raised me some rats and they slapped some handcuffs on me. And they threw me in a police car and they took me to a federal prison. A week or so after my arrival, they took me to court and front of my magistrate, a federal judge. And he was talking about extradition. But I did not know what is this you mean. I was naive to the law, naive to the language. This is the type of English I know at that time. If I say five words in English, believe me, my friends, three of them would be cuss words. So uh, they brought an interpreter to me to explain to me what is this you mean. And all he told me in Spanish was, you either wave it or fight it. They're going to take you back anyway. So I, I start thinking. I'm not a killer. My mama did not raise no killers. I would wave it. And as soon as they see this ugly face in Florida, they would let me go. But how wrong I was. So I wave a tradition. They started me from the state of Pennsylvania all the way back to the state of Florida. A week or so after my arrival, they took me to court in front of a judge. And he was reading the charges to me. You've been indicted, arrested, for first degree murder and armed robbery, and the state of Florida is sinking the death penalty against you, the electric chair. A week or so after that, they took me right back to court with the same judge. This time to court upon a lawyer for me, a public defender. The truth is, I'm not OJ Simpson. I don't have money to hire lawyers. So this public defender comes to me, and I cannot hardly understand what he's saying. But, because they never gave me an interpreter, but he used to pat me in the back and, and tell me that everything is going to be all right. You going home. I did understood that going home stuff. I should go home. I did not commit the crime. So now we're going to trial. Monday, we start picking jury. Tuesday, we're still picking jury. And after they pick 11 whites, one African-American person, a black man, no Hispanic, and I'm Hispanic. They read instruction to the jury how to conduct themselves in a capital murder case with the sinking, the death penalty. Wednesday, that's when the evidence come in. And this is what they had against me. They have what they call a, a police informant. What they call in the streets a snitch. He claimed that I confessed the crime to him. 
the same police informant, the same snitch also implicates another person a crime. A friend of mine, that's what I thought. He gets arrested. He gets interrogated. He makes big thing statements. He incriminates himself in the crime. He gets charged with it. First degree murder, armed robbery. And they threaten him with the electric chair. It's time to make a deal. You see, prosecutors in the United States, they make deals with criminals. So he was able to strike a deal with the state. He gets his first degree murder charge dropped. He gets his armed robbery charge dropped. All the way to accessory after the facts. No more threats of the electric chair. He gets two years probation. For two years he already had. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry about that. That's Lisa's fault. Oh <laughs> she ain't told me to cut it off. <laughs> so, so he gets two years probation with two years he already had. And he gets sentenced to two years, two years probation after I'm convicted and sentenced to death. They wanted to show his testimony. And basically, <laughs> and basically, basically what he said in trial was, I picked him up, took him to the scene of the crime, dropped him off, came an hour and a half later, picked him up again, took him home, don't know what happened to after it happened. That's the entire evidence against me. No physical evidence against me. There's a testimony of two questionable witnesses with a, with a criminal record from coast to coast. Two questionable witnesses that make deals with the state, with the prosecutor, and they get lenses, rewards for their own crimes that not, they didn't commit. This is what I had on my favor, on the defense side. I have what you call an alibi witness. I have four witnesses collaborating the alibi testimony. I had all the witnesses testifying saying that the police informant, the snitch, had a grunge against me. But I had a problem. Every witness that I had on my side was from the African-American race. A black woman, a black man. And when a black woman and a black man testified for the state, for the prosecutor, all of a sudden they got good credibility. They even dressed them. I never saw my court defender with a three-piece suit on. I never saw my co-defender with a clean shave. In the streets, they used to call him the wolf. But when a black man or a black woman testified for the defense on my side, all of a sudden the credibility is gone. Thursday, they found me guilty. Friday, the same week, they sent me to death. And the judge complained that it was taking too long. 